So here's, here's the story. Um, I was interested in um, the complexity of theorem proving. In fact, that's the name of the paper, right? The complexity of theorem proving procedures, which doesn't sound very much like MP completeness. And so when I submitted the paper to Stock, I actually didn't have my result there. I, I had a section on propositional calculus and uh, complexity, and I had a section on um, predicate calculus, but I didn't have any really big results. But after the, they accepted my paper despite this, because the stock was much easier to get into in those days than now, its standards got way up. <laughs> But uh, then, when I started thinking about writing the final version, I, I had this idea of completeness, of, of complete problems. And of course, where did the idea come from? It came from um, completeness for recursively numerable sets, and in fact, the, uh, what is it, the unsatisfiable uh, pro uh, predicate calculus formulas are complete for uh, recursively numerable problems. And I knew that, and, and my advisor was very interested in, in that, so I credit him for giving me the idea, well, why can't we do this at a lower level for propositional formulas, and then the natural, the analog of recursively numerable becomes non-deterministic polynomial time. And uh, so, and then I, I proved that um, it, um, the, the, well, what I actually proved was that the valid uh, propositional tautology, validity of a propositional tautology, which is in co-NP, it's not in NP, uh, was complete um, for this class. But the, cla but the reductions I, ha I put in that paper were not the many one reductions that CARP used and I use now but they were Turing, um, polynomial time Turing reductions, which are much more general reductions. So I, I yeah, so I, I didn't have it, the words NP and P, that was due to Dick Karp later, and I didn't have the same reduction at a more general reduction, and I had only three complete problems, and of course Dick Karp later, a year later, had, had 21. I did, I did have three in there, of course, um, there was the the tautologies and what and um, subgraph isomorphism. Given two graphs is the first one isomorphic to a subgraph of the other, and then three. Oh, and then well, of course you could also instead of tautology in general, you could look tautologies in disjunctive normal form. That was complete, and also I did also have three DNF. So conjunctive normal form with just three literals in a conjunct, um, that was also in B-complete. So that's what I had in my paper. And was there a conjecture in there about primality? I, I mentioned other possibilities. Yes, primality testing. I said that's, that's a candidate maybe for completeness. Uh, I, I don't, I should look and see what I, how, whether I was doubtful because in fact there are randomized algorithms for primes, they may have said that, I don't remember. And the other, other uh, an open question was graph isomorphism, and that neither of those are, are thought to be NP-complete right. now. In fact, primes are in polytime. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I did mention those. And of course, graph isomorphism is, is, th is, is definitely thought not to be NP-complete, although it's, no one's gotten a polytime algorithm for it. So you mentioned um, uh, Richard Karp's uh, paper following on here. So how long did it take uh, for researchers to sort of realize the significance of MB completeness? Oh, I think I think I think it, it came very fast. I mean, it was obvious, and and uh, Karp's paper was was very well written. He had very he had twenty one examples of NP complete problem. He cleaned up the terminology. He introduced P for poly time and then P for non-deterministic polynomial time. Those, that was new notation, very clean. And he also introduced many one poly time reducibility, whereas I had um, 
I had uh, the more general ki kind of uh, Turing reducibility, polytime Turing reducibility. And all those were very clean, nice definitions. So that paper definitely caught on uh, very rapidly. <laughs>